everybody. So we're here this afternoon at Stone Zoo. Uh, we are, I'm not sure if you can tell through the glare, but we are at our Gibbon exhibit and it's part of our celebration of April as Ape Month, April, Ape, kind of rhymes. And our gibbons, even though they look about the size of monkeys, are actually small apes. So we thought that we'd come today and toss them some food. My name's Allison. I've got my friend Brian with me to do some tossing. So part of their food we're going to try to toss are some grapes and sweet potatoes and apples. And hopefully they will chase them. So Iggy is our mom. She is the one who is golden in color. So if you've been to Stone Zoo before, you might know about the gibbons that these are white cheeked gibbons and all, oops, all of the males are black with white cheeks and all of the females are brown. Except when all the babies are born, they're gonna be the same color as their mom because mom is going to carry her baby for a few months and that baby's never gonna leave their mom. So it's a good form of camouflage. If in the wild, the gibbons were up in the trees where they live and a predator would fly by and that predator ooh, <laughs> could be an eagle or another kind of raptor bird. So when the mom's holding the baby, that would be, I just hit Rachel twice with a grape. Uh, <laughs> the raptor is only going to see one big gibbon instead of a baby gibbon. So if you've been to the zoo before, you might know that we have four members of our gibbon family. We have Iggy, who's right there. She's our mom. Right with her is True, who is their youngest. He is about two and a half years old. We have Kian right over here, who is the father of True, Iggy's mate. And they also have a five-year-old named Gian. And Gian, I think, is five and a half. He's going to be six this summer. So one of the reasons we wanted to take another look at our gibbons for Ape Awareness Month was to talk a little bit more about conservation. If you've been watching the zoo's Facebook program, you might have seen Caitlin at Franklin Park Zoo earlier this week with the gorillas and talking about gorilla conservation. And one of the ways that we can help gibbons is also the same as the gorillas, and that is to recycle your cell phone. And we have recycle boxes here at Stone Zoo and at Franklin Park. If you come to Stone Zoo, the recycle box is located in the gift shop and you can drop off your cell phone or other small electronics to be recycled. One of the reasons that it's important to recycle your cell phone and why it, how it's related to ape conservation is that cell phones are made with a mineral called coltan, which is mined in many of the areas, especially where the gorillas live in Africa. So the more coltan that we can recycle, the less mining that has to be done and the less deforestation of the gorilla habitats. Deforestation is another reason why the gibbons are also critically endangered, just like gorillas. Another way, if you're interested in working on ape conservation, is to avoid buying products with an ingredient called palm oil. So many people have been harvesting the trees that the palm oil is derived from. And when we take down those trees, that means there's fewer homes for the gibbons to live in. So the fewer trees means the fewer gibbons. So there are actually some apps pretty widely available. You can search right I know in the Apple App Store um, or the equivalent for Android users that will, you can just scan a barcode in the grocery store and the app will tell you if that product has palm oil in it or not. So that's kind of an easy way you can work to save apes on a daily basis. <laughs> so Rachel, have we had any questions come in? So what are their favorite habitats? 
kinds of foods out of the ones that you're tossing them? I would say their favorite of the foods that we're tossing would be the grapes. They're used to catching those. And I don't know if Rachel's caught any of them. They're usually pretty good at catching them one handed. But we also have some sweet potato, which they really like, some apple chunks, some banana, and some sesame seeds. Oh, and some raisins. And it reminds me that as we're getting to these warmer months now, one of the Gibbons' favorite foods in the summertime is one of, I think, a food that a lot of people like. It's watermelon. But I think most people are a lot <laughs> cleaner when they eat watermelon than the Gibbons. The Gibbons trying to get it all over the place. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looks like you've got a friend right there. Let's see if we can give him some more food. So Gibbons are the only type of what's called a lesser ape. I think most people are used to hearing about the great apes when we talk about gorillas and orangutans and chimpanzees and another animal that's sort of related to the chimpanzee called a bonobo. And people, we are also part of great apes. So gibbons are called lesser apes, not because they're not as good, just because of their size. They're a little bit smaller. Sure. There's lots of differences, even though like see our little gibbons look a lot like monkeys, but there's one big difference that you can tell just by looking at them. And it's that apes do not have tails and monkeys do. That's the easiest way if you're just looking by sight to tell the difference. <laughs> oh, piece of apple. <laughs> They do. So we have a lot of training for all of our animals here at the zoo. And we train them to actually participate in their own medical care. So we will train the gibbons to do things like come up to the mesh and open their mouth. And that assists the veterinarians in examining their teeth. We might have them show us one of their arms or their legs, or if it's Iggy, we might have her put her belly right up to the mesh so that maybe one day if we think she's pregnant, we could get an ultrasound on her. And by practicing this with their keepers, the gibbons are less afraid when they have to have an exam so it goes easier for them. And we do that with almost all of our animals here at the zoo. And we had a question about how long do they typically live? That's a great question. So in the wild, and I should mention that uh, white cheek gibbons that, like our family here, live in Southeast Asia. In the wild, they can live into their mid to late 20s. Here in the zoo, under human care, they're going to live probably a little bit longer. Like all of our animals, the gibbons here have excellent diet. We get, keep an eye on them every day to see if they're having any you know, health issues or if their body is changing so they can get very prompt medical care. And also, <laughs> there are no predators here at the zoo. So they can live a little bit longer than the, their lifespan in the wild. I believe you're hearing the song of the whooping cranes in the background. Oh, there's Iggy. Does anybody have any other questions, Rachel? Do the siblings play with each other a lot? Oh, they do. So if you've ever visited the zoo, you might have seen True and Gian, who are the, one, the two who are right on the ground in front of us right now. They love to play. They love to wrestle. It looks like they're wrestling. They roll on the ground. Sometimes they bare their teeth, but it's all in play. The gibbons are very social animals. So there's a lot of touching and spending time together among the family members. And in fact, they are the only species of ape that don't build an individual nest to sleep at night. The gibbons will actually sleep cuddled up together. So usually two by two between this group, 
but they don't build a nest. They just cuddle together and they have their, they sleep that way at night and sometimes they take naps that way too. And there's a question about if they like to interact with humans. Oh, well, you know, that's a great question. So it's hard for us to say, you know, what, you know, what kind of emotions an animal might have. They're typically, they don't have human emotions like we do. So we kind of watch their behavior. And so I think that they do, to an extent, enjoy interacting with their keepers. They certainly enjoy training because they get a reward <laughs> at the end of their training, which is often, um, I know for Iggy really likes apple juice. And I think Gian is really good at a certain type of training and he likes to get some apple juice too. So they get a high level reward at the end of each training session. Uh, when the gibbons are younger, so like True's age right here, I just based on personal observation, oh, you got a little vocalization there. Um, True does definitely seems to be a little bit more engaged on what's going on outside his enclosure. So watching people. Iggy, if you've been to the zoo, um, enjoys sitting at the front of her when there's a big crowd, sitting at the front window. And sometimes she'll urinate. And she'll do a little show just for everyone. I call it Iggy's signature move. It's just kind of her way of interacting with the people that are looking at her. Sure. Would you remind us why is Iggy a different color? Oh, sure. So one of the very interesting things about gibbons is that the males and females look remarkably different. So that's called sexual dichromatism, means two colors. Um, and so all the females are that golden color that Iggy is, and all the males are this black color, except when they're born. I already explained about how the babies will stick with mom. So between about a year and 18 months, those babies are going to shift from that golden color to black. So even the females, they're all going to turn to be black with those white cheeks. And if it's a male, it stays black for the rest of its life. If it's a female, oh, here's Iggy her coat will turn back to that golden color when she's old enough and ready to be a mom. So that's just one of the really cool things about gibbons. You don't find that sexual dichromatism a lot in mammals. You do find a lot of it in birds. So sometimes the brightly colored uh, ducks are usually male and the females are more of a dull color. But very unusual in mammals such as gibbons. Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I think we probably don't know an answer to that question. Um, so when it's cold out, when it's the, very, the, the winter months and it's too cold for the gibbons to be out, so under about 45 degrees or so, and they're inside, uh, I don't really know what time they go to sleep. <laughs> but now here at the zoo, sometimes they'll go inside for their dinner when the zoo closes. Um, if it's warm enough, they'll stay out all night. They can sleep outside or inside. So I guess we don't really know. We'd have to get a hidden camera on them inside to see how long they sleep. But that's a very interesting question. Yes, and I think that's all the time we had. So is there anything else we want to say before we wrap up? No, just want to say the weather is getting, you know, beautiful out. It's a great time to come see our gibbons. Can learn a little bit more about apes. And if you've got any small electronics like cell phones that you'd like to recycle, you can do it all at the same time that you come and visit with the apes. And you're doing a good thing by helping them. So come visit us.